good morning, Dan here. Thanks for joining me. Down in Southeast Kansas today, and gonna do some, a little bit of a walk around Big Hill Lake and share that with you. And then I have a piece of gear that I, I made a promise that I would do a review on it, and I'm gonna share with you what I think about it. Okay, just look at this beautiful sky today. Okay, this is the Big Hill Lake. It's a Corps of Engineer project where I'm gonna be just doing a short little walk today. It was a pretty morning and uh, love it out here. Kansas is uh, it's just a wonderful place, great people and very, very pretty. Well, there's a few things about Kansas that you get used to, or maybe you never do really get used to, but it's, it doesn't matter because it's always going to be this way. Uh, one is that the wind's always blowing, uh, but that adds to the charm of the place. And then um, oftentimes when you talk about a tree, it's not hard to point out which one you're talking about because uh, trees Except in this area, I'm gonna, it's gonna make me a liar, but trees typically are not, uh, you don't see a lot of them <laughs> in the prairies, especially in uh, central and western Kansas. But um, here in southeast Kansas, it's sort of unique because you have rolling hills and you do have quite a few trees, but there is plenty of, of farmland and prairie as well. So I'm gonna walk you around a little bit on this lake and uh, let you see it. And then coming back out here in May, and the plan is to go pretty much due north of where I am right now to the Flint Hills and hike through the Flint Hills area of Kansas. One of the reasons I wanted to come out today was uh, I was contacted by Will P. I think I'm saying that right, it's W-E-A-L P.E. Will P. And they had seen some of my videos and uh, appreciated the fact that I use the GoPro. And they wanted me to test out what their version of what GoPro calls the chesty. The chesty is a strap mount that goes across your chest and, uh, and you can mount the, the camera right in the center of your chest. Which is probably the very best place to, to take a, a point of view video so that you can sort of get the feel of what the, the person who's taking the video sees. And I told them that yes, I would, I would share what my honest opinions are of it and I would do a video and share with you this, this product of theirs. It's a couple of things that I start out with. One is it's, it's pretty light. In, in fact, it's, it's very light. Uh, I don't know what the exact weight is, but when I picked it up, I have a Chesty by GoPro, and this is significantly lighter than that product. It's also pretty comfortable. It's got very wide uh, elastic straps, and um, it, it fits well, and I, I'm enjoying that part of it. Honestly, I was a little concerned because it was one more thing to have to put on. And if you've seen my videos, you see that I, on my backpack, I have a mount here on the left shoulder strap, and I just clip my, my camera right there on my shoulder strap. I like that because it leaves my hands free. I don't like it because if you also see my videos, you'll see my hand always in the, in the picture uh, 
with my trekking pole. I'm hoping that maybe this will be a little different that way, but it is one more thing to have to put on. I didn't know how it was gonna feel with my backpack to have this, this set of straps across my shoulders and, and around my, my chest, and then, um, and then also have my backpack with the shoulder straps over that. But the buckles for this, unlike, again, unlike the, my chesty that I got from GoPro, uh, the buckles don't interfere with my shoulder straps. And so actually the backpack is pretty comfortable. Let me put it on and I'll show you what I've got. Okay, let me show you with it mounted, you can see you know, my, my belly bag will sit down below this little handle. This is my little shorty that I keep it on. It's, it's very comfortable. Uh, that part I like. Let me show you something that I would like to see them do is that this buckle here uh, is, you can't adjust the, the distance it is from this, from this mount right here. You can't adjust that. And so as you look at my setup, this is, this is my road uh, receiver that goes and plugs into the, my, the media mod on my GoPro. And I typically have it mounted on a cold shoe right here. But with it mounted there, it hits this buckle and I can't keep it there. And so for now, I, there's a cold shoe on top and I, so I moved it up here to mount it there. Um, and I guess that's okay, but when I take the, the camera off the mount, then it makes it hard to work the, the screen and it makes it hard to, uh, to turn the camera on and off with here. So I wish this was a little bit longer or I could adjust it so that I could bring it out just a little bit so that it would clear uh, my my microphone all right but I think I like the feel of it it's very comfortable I, I was a little concerned if it was going to be you know irritating around my neck it isn't um, again these straps it comes in a little bit tighter on the sides here and so my shoulder straps of my backpack do not interfere with these so I don't know how I'm going to like it uh, just always putting it on and off but here's an advantage that I think of this is that when I take my backpack off and my GoPro is mounted here on the shoulder strap my the camera is always sort of flopping around and I have cracked a couple of screens with that so um, with it being here I can take my backpack on and off and I never have to worry about taking the camera on and off so I, that part again I think will be an advantage for me uh, with this. All right, well, let's walk around a little bit with it and let's see what the, the view looks like from the camera. Okay, operator error. As I was looking at this mount, I found that if I adjust this strap over here, it lets me pull it through and pull this out some. And so I did that and checked that out. It's just perfect. It, uh, my camera mounts in place like it should. I've got my, my Rode microphone over here on the side where I like it. It lets me uh, operate both the shutter and the on-off switch over here on the side of the boat switch. So, hey, I'm glad that, uh, that I find out, like oftentimes, is my problems or operator errors. So, we're going to walk on the Ruth Nixon Memorial Trail just a little bit. This passes through an area full of history. Uh, goes back 12,000 years to nomadic bands of hunters and gatherers. It was the Paleo Indian period, and uh, most of the Indians during recent history were of the Osage tribe. They made their homes along the creek and hunted buffalo on the prairies. And the first permanent white families, they settled here during the end of the Civil War. And the first white child was born in Labette County. His name was Charles Blair, and his birth was around 
1966 and a log cabin near the northern portion of this trail. This lake is very pretty. Used by the locals a lot. Uh, Corps of Engineers came in, of course, and set this, this up for recreation uh, and water preservation. It's a nice cool day. Must be around 50 degrees out. And uh, blue skies, very pretty. Share a couple of more things that I enjoy about this this mount by Wilpie is that uh, it makes it very easy for me to take the camera off, change batteries, because uh, it's right there. It's almost like what I like about my uh, belly bag on my backpack is that the things are very accessible right there. And so I can, I can sit and access the camera, but I can also, just like here, you know, if I want to check I can actually see the screen which I can't do from my shoulder strap I think this is going to be part of my kit someone made some rock carns here it's a big lake very very pretty and uh, there's no boats out so these waves are just from the wind. The Kansas wind, you're either going to learn to love it or you're going to hate it. Uh, through the years, I've really grown fond of it. And, you know, I, I miss it. Another view from this beautiful lake. These little spots are all along this trail that I think just sort of goes around the perimeter of the lake. Another spot right up here, take you up to it, give you another view. And then uh, I just want to get to walking for a bit. All right, let's just walk on the trail for a while. You know, this mount, it makes it really easy to put my camera in and take it out. Uh, friend John, he bought a shoulder mount like what I use and he was complaining about how challenging it is to uh, put the camera up in the mount. And it is, uh, I got, I've gotten used to it through the past couple of years that I've used it. And so now I can sort of feel how it goes, but it, even then it's a challenge. 
at times. So for this, it's right in front of you and you can just, makes it really easy. I have no problem both taking the camera out when I wanna take it out and then putting it back in very quickly. We'll see how it works when, as we're walking the view of the trail or do you get my hands in it. You know, sometimes also when the camera's mounted up on my shoulder, uh, I, you can see my, my cheek and my hat. I don't like that. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't like to interfere with, of course that, with the beauty that uh, I'm trying to share with you. You don't need to see my old scruffy chin or my old floppy hat. Okay, just some final thoughts on this mount by Whippy. I, uh, first impressions, this is the first impressions, is I like it. Uh, it's comfortable throughout this little hike. It's been very comfortable to wear. It gives me very easy access to my camera. And I think the point of view shot, the, the sharing with you what I'm seeing is probably the best position is sort of there in the center of the chest. So I like that. Uh, the one thing that I didn't like was the, uh, the way that the mount kept me from setting up my camera the way I like it. And then I discovered that that was my fault. So operator error again, <laughs> I do that a lot. So that really wasn't a strike against the mount. Um, We'll see. You know, when I get on a, a longer hike, I plan to take this with me when I go on the Penhody. That'll be about a 58 mile hike. And there we will uh, see how comfortable it is or if it's obnoxious and, uh, and I'll let you know. But wanted to get this, this out to you and share my first impressions and uh, First impressions is, I would give this mount a thumbs up. Uh, yeah, I like it. Okay, well, this is the north end of this little trailhead. Really is a gem. You know, highly recommend if you ever get a chance. And maybe you wanna go do a little bit of fishing. So, there they are, Parsons, Kansas, actually. The little town of Mound Valley, Kansas, which is probably closer to here than Parsons. Uh, I think Mound Valley has a population of maybe 400. We hear a lot of news and we see a lot of disturbing things. And if you're like me, you become concerned about this nation that I love so much and have given much of my adult life to serve. And you wonder about our fate in the future. But then if you need reassurance, if you really want to see what America is like, then I suggest that you come out to the Midwest. You see what real people are like, that their only agenda is to love life, love one another, love this nation, work hard, and uh, honor one another. This is what real America is all about. And this is why I want to hike these trails less traveled over the next year and share with you and hopefully encourage you to see that this is a beautiful and a wonderful nation that God has blessed. As we walk back, I will uh, leave you with a happy Thanksgiving. Looking forward to the holiday season as it opens up for us. As we look toward Christmas, and may we see that the love that we have been given, especially shown through the Christmas season, that uh, we can just give maybe 
one another. So uh, as always, stay safe, stay healthy, stay on the path. God bless you. I'm wondering if you'd come wandering my way. If you ever get lost or if the trail leads you astray. The music of the pack can always bring you back. I wonder, can we wander away and I'll spread the word?